going to learn about understanding finance. To help us, we have Jessica and Sam. The first thing we need to know are some basic definitions. Human capital is a person's knowledge and work skills. Labor means work that a person does. Income is the money earned. The more education, experience, and skills a person has, the more income they receive. When Sam first started working in high school, he had little education, no experience, and made very little. Upon graduating from college, Sam now had more ex education, a little more experience, and make much more money. The more experience he earns, the more money he can make. In terms of business, resources are things that are produced and used. Supply is how much of something is available. Jessica started her own business selling friendship bracelets. When she started, she had made eight bracelets. Since she had eight bracelets to sell, her supply was eight. Demand is how much of something people want. When she started her business, she had five people that wanted to buy bracelets. Therefore, her demand was five. Since her demand was low, she had to start off with a higher price in order to make a profit. As more and more people wanted bracelets and the demand increased, she was able to lower the cost. In general, when the supply is high, the cost is low. And when the supply is low, the cost is high. If a person doesn't have enough money to pay for something, there are things they can do to get the money and pay at a later date. They can borrow money, which is when a person lends you money that you're expected to pay back. Credit can be used when wants or needs exceed the ability to pay and the borrower pays back the lender, usually with interest. Interest is the money paid by the borrower to the lender for the use of the lender's money. For example, Sam wants to buy a car that costs $20,000, but he only has $10,000. He needs $10,000 more to pay, so he borrows money from the bank. He needs to borrow then $10,000 so that's his principal. He has to pay interest on the amount he borrowed, so he will pay $1,185.81 in interest. So then the total amount Sam pays the bank is $11,185.81. There are also saving plans. Saving plans help you save money regularly so you can reach your goals. A common saving plan is a college fund. Parents can save money each month or year to be used when their children are ready for college to help with the high cost of college tuition. Mr. Patez borrowed $12,000 from the bank to pay for a car. He paid $14,850 back to the bank. Which of these is the most likely reason Mr. Patez paid the bank more than the amount he borrowed? He made a mistake in calculating the amount he needed to pay back. He actually needed more than $12,000 for the car. He had to pay interest on the amount of money he borrowed, or he had to pay sales tax on the amount of money he borrowed. Well, when you borrow money, you don't just pay back the amount you borrowed, you have to pay interest. Therefore, Mr. Patez must have needed to pay interest on top of what he borrowed, making the amount he paid for them more than the $12,000. So this must be the right answer. Let's try another. Luis works for a company. The company pays him every week for the work he does. Some weeks, he works more than other weeks. Which statement is most likely true? When Luis works fewer hours, he earns more income from the company. When Luis works more hours, he earns more income from the company. When Luis works more hours, the company gets less labor from him. Or, when Luis works fewer hours, the company gets more labor from him. Well, since we know that Luis is getting paid for the work he does each week, then the more hours he works, the more money he's going to receive. So this must be the answer. Congratulations, you're ready to work on some personal finance problems. Good luck!